Can I ask you a question? Yes. Are you politically affiliated? Um, not really. I don't strongly. belong to a party. Yeah. People ask me what I am, I say I'm a conservative Christian. Yeah. That's I don't, what I am. I don't belong to a party. Politics, I know they're necessary, but I just I don't get into them. And it's awful. It's not responsible. Well, I, will, I will tell you just one thing, though. I, uh, I got two books signed by Donald Trump. Really? Uh, yeah. Where did you get those? Well, they sent them to me. Oh, okay. Because I wanted him to be elected. Yeah. Because he went to politician. And look at the economy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. We needed that. Yeah, he's he's definitely um, a different, definitely a difference than what you typically see. So but I the think thing about it with me, with, you know, honestly, I don't understand why. I know, well, I know what it is. It's a smoke screen to cover up what they've done to him when he was running for president because he's going after him. Glenn Barr is going after who instigated it, mm-hmm. how they done it and everything. And they're doing all this, trying to impeach and all, and they ain't got nothing to impeach with simply for that reason. And it's, uh, it's, it's the truth of it. Mm-hmm. I've researched this all the way around. They've made 20, 31st, okay. Oh, I know. If you can believe it's the end of the week, end of the month, and end of the week. Yeah. All them bills come again. I know. I feel like we just did that. Yeah, I'm pretty, like I said, I know I should be more active into it, but I'm not. Um, because well, I, get, I always enjoy, this is what I love I lived about in Anderson, When I lived in Anderson, I still, at Georgia license, I voted in Georgia, and I voted for Jimmy Carter, and I like to start I could not buy a job anywhere. And I said right then, I said, I will pay attention who I vote for from mm-hmm. now on, and I have. Mm-hmm. I'm serious, I couldn't buy a job, and I was young, and I was healthy as a horse, and I could drive nails, buddy. I could. And I was a single man, which I had a girlfriend over and all that. But yeah. I couldn't buy a job. Right. And I learned about politics, and I go, man, I'm going to watch who I vote for. Yeah. And I, well, I put letters in the paper here sometimes. The chairman of the Democrat Party, he put always putting all this, what I call propaganda in there. And I, I retaliate and I write a letter in there. And my wife don't like it, but I said, well, I feel like I need to do that. Yeah, yeah. Because nobody will speak up. Yeah. No one's going to come around. Yeah, you got to speak up for yourself because... Well, for your beliefs. You know, if, if you don't do anything, it, it just rolls over you. And I will have my say, my Christian beliefs, can't hate nobody, mm-hmm. but there is right and wrong. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree with that, definitely. <laughs> have you always lived in um, Carnesville or Franklin County? Well, most of my life, yeah, but I've lived in South Carolina some. Anderson and... Um, yeah, but I've lived in my house about... Uh, I won't go pet him on the head. <laughs> I just, uh, I've lived in my house about 32 years. Okay. So you've been in the community a while. Yeah. How did your family end up living here? Or how did you end up living here? I was mostly raised in Franklin County. You know, mm-hmm. daddy moved around a lot. He never owned anything. He was, he was fiddle-footed. But we lived in Fairplay, Anderson, Townville, Livonia, Cornsville. He would just move around. Mm-hmm. That's just the way it was. My great aunt, she's she's from her family's from Fair Play. Fair um, Play, I got grandparents buried there, and uncles and aunts. And, mm-hmm. yeah. That all be Porterfield is the last name. No, they were Hendrix. Hendrix. H e n d r i x, just like Jimmy yeah. Hendrix spells his. Yeah. Interesting. Huh? Can't remember what her maiden name was. It's gonna take me a minute. Can you tell me what type? Of home you live in. You already told me you've been there 32 years and it's a single family standing? Yeah. yeah. It's a split level. Split level. And uh, the upstairs, it's a split Yeah, what kind of house? Yeah. When I moved into it, <clears throat> today I moved into it, my back's a little bit still, so my wife went in there with my dog. She went to the hospital while she's in there. It's a little ugly house. I painted all the rooms inside and everything. Mm-hmm. And I added on later a basement, 1,200 square foot basement, up above it, bedrooms and all that. Um, 
Now, when you say what kind of house is it, what do you mean? Um, I think all the, this, a single family yeah. home, freestanding. Yeah. Um, you know, you, it's about 2,200 square feet, not counting the basement. Yeah, well, that's nice. Well, I'm going to sell it and I'm going to build a small one for her and me. Oh, nice. I just sold some land up here and some land down yonder, so I'm getting it built up where I can build it. Yeah, that's nice. We live in a. Um, like a 1950s ranch, so it's about like 1,100 square feet. But it's per- yeah, it's perfect. Plus, we have to clean, you know, for two people. So. Well, as we get older, I can appreciate that a lot. Yeah, yeah, kind of downsize. I got two things in my basement. I got a 16 Camaro over here, and I got a 69 Camaro over here. Oh, nice. Yeah, and my son is 68, and I told him, said, son, daddy's not putting no more money in this car. I took the motor out, I put my other motor in it, and I... I rebuild engines when I used to have time. And <laughs> I got I got a lot to do. Yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, all right, so for now we're going to talk about solar. Have you invested in solar either on the rooftop of your home, on your property, or as part of your business, or as part of a program through your utility company? No. Okay. Um, tell me why you do not have rooftop solar. Did you make that decision, or was it made for you? I made a decision because it's too expensive. Mm-hmm. And they say, well, you get tax deductions, but me and my wife, it starts at $24,000 before we can itemize. Mm-hmm. So anything that I can deduct, it takes 24000 or more before I can do it. It does any good. Right. So I can't outlay that kind of money. Right. And I've always been interested in solar because common sense would tell you, um, I said, Randy, I seen one when I was 11 years old. A Bigfoot? Where? He, he said, it scared the crap out of me. I said, well, what? He goes, well, me and my mom and my friend was out behind the house. And it was summer night, you know, and the moon was shining. And we were just blabbering on, looked down there, and there's this big old thing went walking down beside the field said it was huge and it had hair all over and it was that's the way he said I jumped up and run in the house and my friend was right behind me said mama was out there trying to hold up the lawn to and bring it in the house he said it's where'd he grow up where was Danielsville. it Danielsville he was in Danielsville <laughs> and I, I know Tony for a lot of years I own and operate a big truck too and he, that's what he does now he drives a truck and I never know him to lie about anything. He's very, he's a big old guy, but he's very low key and quiet. And I was talking about Bigfoot one day, and he looked at me and he kind of looked down. He said, I, I seen one one time ago. What? And he was serious. He said, it scared the crap out of me. That thing was huge. He said, it was real tall and had hair all over the so they went down there the next day and we're up thing and walk. They just stomped the grass flat as a flitter down through there beside that field. <laughs> they seen one. Wow. I've never met anybody that's seen one. That's the only one I ever knew, but I'm going to a convention in Gatlinburg in July. I, I'm interested in everything I always have been. But solar energy is a very feasible thing if the cost of one is so high. Yeah. Yeah. Like I say, we built two collectors over at Tri County Tech in Clemson, and I was actually the one that formed the metal around them and all, you know, with a mm-hmm. little tin hammer and all. And, oh, you'll be a tin smith, all these engineers, and I just kind of looked at them, and we built them and all, you know, and this guy used them on his house. Serpentine solar collectors, but I've always known either passive or active solar is a good thing. But it, it's just too expensive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's, it's too expensive. This kind of goes into what you're saying. Yeah. Um, would you, if it was available, want solar? Like, if it was cheaper? Oh, yeah. 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 It'd take a nut not to want it. Yeah. Free energy. On but, your rooftop. You know, yeah. Yeah. I got a, and it faces south. In order for it to be feasible, your rooftop has to face south 10 degrees. Variable from okay. south. And mine faces just about perfect on the top of that building up there. All that across there would be about perfect. But, you know, it's too expensive. How do you feel about the way it looks on the house? You, you can mind see it? it. Yeah, because it's on the back side. Well, it's, 
the front gable like this up there, and it'd be down this side over here. Oh, okay. Where you can't see it anyway. Yeah. Oh, that worked out. That will work out for you. Yeah. Which, the aesthetics of it wouldn't bother me anyway. If it was on, like, the front of the house or something, oh, aesthetics. Well, you know, as long as it performed. Yeah. And, and saved me money. Yeah. Which I'm not a Scrooge, but Lord, money goes by as nuts as it is. Yes. Yes, it does. <laughs> yes, it does. If you had the option, okay, so if you had the option, you'd put rooftop on your home. Um, okay. I'd like to talk a little bit about rooftop solar adoption in general. And for that, I can find our maps. Okay, here's a map of the United States. Um, where do you think people adopt or invest the most solar? Could you draw that on the map? And you can just circle. And you can do as many as you want or as little as you want. Where's the most tree holders? Which, <laughs> that, you know, I took a class and a guy told me, said, man, I'm a tree hugger. And I said, you know, that could be derogatory. He goes, what do you mean? I said, think about this. There has been so many lies told about climate change for political reasons that it's hard to believe anything anybody says about it. And it's really sad. Yeah. It's yeah. really sad. Yeah. Um, now, I know. <laughs> what kind of people live in these communities that you've circled? You don't want me to say that. You can say whatever you want. <laughs> I just say this. I don't think everybody that does solar really are liberals and have an agenda. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of them do. And a lot of them are against things that like fossil fuel, which is a necessary evil at this time. It is not developed enough. Electric cars, solar is not developed enough. We have to have fossil energy right now to keep leading the world. And these are the type of people that want to stop pipelines uh, and want to tell us how we should and should not live while they themselves do not live like that always. I understand. As in carbon footprints and, yeah, mm -hmm. elitist liberals. So what about these communities are different than, you know, the community in Carnesville? What's different about... Who the, you know, what's the community like? You got an appointment inside, right? <laughs> I do, but I think, yeah, we got, you know, we got a few minutes. Common sense don't work at that place. They, they actually think socialism will work, with me, and it will not. So you think it's the people, like their beliefs? Yeah. And their political? Yeah, and they're, uh, and they think the world's going to end in 10 years. Nobody knows when the world is going to end. Okay, the tornadoes and all this stuff, the Bible says all this is coming, you know, but it's not because of climate change. Climate change is natural. We're going through a natural transition right now, and it's been proven by looking back in history, but they want to take it and use it as a political agenda, which is, and it's really sad. Because to me, I can't believe nothing they say. Right. It's hard to know yeah. what to believe. Well, like Nancy Pelosi. Donald Trump wants to turn the nation back white. And I go, what? Why did she say that? I mean, she made a racial thing out of it. He's a businessman. He's making a country jump. The lowest unemployment rate for women and minorities. But yet, they still... Oh, we hurt Donald Trump. I go, why? Wow. One guy was in my house one day. I don't rock that man. I go, why? And they don't ever have an answer. He tells lies. I go, really? Yeah. You listen to a lot of the other politicians here like me. And the biggest beef I have is liberal abortion. I don't believe you'll kill God's babies. And that's real strong with me. Yeah, that's a big one right now. I just don't believe you'll do that. Mm -hmm. and, and what's sad about it, Whitney, the same people go to church. Who are they praying to? 
it can't be my God because my God said if you do the least of mine, you've done it to me. And killing his babies, I don't think my God likes that. Mm-hmm. Let's see, oh, so and so's in our prayers, my God. Who are these people praying to? And I, I put letters in the paper to this thing for them. Oh, I don't like it. I told you, I don't care. I said, these idiots come out with all this stuff. And, oh, boy. I just don't even get started on it. But <laughs> a lot of these people right here. More, yeah, liberal than, yeah. yeah. Not. They're hypocrites, a lot of them. Yeah. I don't know a lot about. You know what I believe? They're sincere about it. When Sean Penn goes down to Venezuela and says, I'm going to give the government all my money and I'm going to live as a pest. I go, I believe you serious. <laughs> Did he do that? No. He oh, won't he... never do it either. No, he but he goes, oh, he just loves Venezuela. It's so silly. If these people love it so much, why don't they go give all their money away that they're made through capitalism and go live it? Mm-hmm. I see what you're saying. I'm serious. Yeah. And the socialists think they can make it work in this country. It will not work. You destroy innovation. You destroy motivation. You destroy every bit of it. Now, solar energy ties into this. Along with climate change and all this other stuff. Electric cars. I don't want to drive a car that i got to get to the and wonder if I'm going to have enough power to get back home. How far is Columbus from here? About 200 miles. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was far. Yeah. But what if you're in the middle of Atlanta and it goes dead? Where do you go? Okay. What do we do now? Yeah. Yeah. Being stuck in Atlanta. It's not there yet. Yeah. So I guess I'm a dinosaur. So I, I <laughs> no. No. I do in reality. I'm very tall. Yeah. I learned how to fix my car because I couldn't afford to let nobody work on it. Yeah. I can do a woman told me one time with she said, Ain't do more than any man I ever known in my life. I go, Well thank you. I said I was raised to do that. I can build a house, I can, I can do about anything I want to do. I set my mind to it. I yeah. God give me that gift. And God done that. God took real good care of me. Yeah. And I believe in God. And I don't turn my back on my God either. Yeah. And people, oh, you Bible temper and you talk guns. I go, well, yeah. I'm a certified NRA customer instructor, but I haven't given no classes in a long time. But everybody should have the right. If somebody knocks that door down, they take care of themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean. Did you ever have something coming at you? I wonder how them people feel when they're buried. <laughs> Probably don't live to tell it. <laughs> Well, you know, it, this happens a lot, and people don't realize it. Yeah. There's a, uh, there's a movie, what was it called, Backcountry, something like that, and it was a true story about a black bear that was stalking this man and his wife, and he didn't have no gun. Were they camping or something? Yeah. And it mm. killed him. She got Gosh, away, yeah. but boy, she had a hard time getting away from it. That's scary. Well, think about it. When you're in the mountains, if something comes at you, you better have something that will stop that. Yeah. Or yeah. it will get your kid, or it will get you, or it will get your husband, or your daughter. But, you know, people say, well, y'all don't have enough sense to do that. So you shouldn't have no gun. What plant do these people live on? Maybe don't see bears all the time. <laughs> well, <laughs> a bear or some crack can knock your door down. Yeah. Yeah, anybody, anybody can come in, that's for sure. Well, we're going to do the same thing with Georgia. Um, in what community do you think people have adopted the most solar? And you can circle it. Well, it would be a high-end place where people have plenty of money. Is there any particular... It's hard because it doesn't have the... Um, yeah, it, yeah. The true. county. I know Georgia, that's a different atmosphere. I would say if it's anywhere, well, 
it's going to expose you to the way it's faced. Maybe some right around there or around there or maybe around in here. Oh, I know not there, not there, not there, not there. I hadn't seen much in Athens either. I just say round in there. Okay. Know. So um, what makes that community so different from the people, you know, in Franklin County? They got money. What kind of people live in these communities? Well, higher end people. I mean, you know, they live in north of Atlanta right in here, so... That's what I would Make think. more money. They make good money. Make good money. And they commute back and forth to Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What about, um, do any of your friends or family have any rooftop solar? No. And why do you think they don't? Too expensive. And the tax breaks they offer don't work because of deductions. You have to meet certain deductions where it even kicks in. Okay. Or it don't count. Okay. So that's a lot of money to put out. Okay. I know it would return, but if you face right, but it's still a lot of money to put out. So if it were more affordable, what are some characteristics of why they don't adopt? So it's expensive. Um, Mostly, yeah. The tax. And a lot of they don't they don't know. They're not aware how much it will save them. I mean it. See, this country, people have been told so many different things, you don't know what to believe. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, from all angles. <laughs> you go. It's a lot of different... And you know, they say, well, it's right here, do this, and then you buy into this, and you go, what? I spent all this money, and this is all I'm getting? Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's, it's definitely a lot. You turn on the TV, it's overwhelming to know. Yeah. The biggest problem you have with solar is when you group it in with... Green energy, which they've been millions and millions wasted on green energy that did not work. And it cost them a lot of money. Now, if the, if the development technology had been there, it probably would have worked, but it's, a lot of it's not there yet. And a lot of people are jumping around, and a lot of people make a lot of money on this stuff. That's what a lot of that is. But uh, I think a lot of people feel that way about solar. It's really expensive, and it's hard to find somebody you can actually believe when they tell you this will cut your power bill and it'll pay for itself this, this amount of time. It's hard to believe. Yeah, because there's so many salespeople and stuff like that. Well, that and it's been a political thing, you know, both sides. Just here we go, round and round, you know, and, it, and, and politics is about to ruin a lot of things. Mm-hmm. I believe that. Yeah. Well, there's a lot out there. 